to God's word and they leave here unchanged. We know the power of God's word to change a man's heart. We know the power of God's word to enter into the innermost recesses and fiber of our being and for an individual to sit here and listen to what God has to say and leave here like they came. That is a presumptuous individual. All right. It's an individual who has no respect for divine authority. They have become arrogant, proud, and daring, and they literally shake the fist of rebellion in God's face. Mm -hmm. Peter said mm -hmm. they are self-willed. Mm -hmm. They're given over to gratification, arrogance, and they're self-pleasing. Mm -hmm. As we look at presumption here tonight, we are looking at an attitude of an individual who's dead set on doing whatever they want to do mm -hmm. without any regard for the law of God. It's one who is dead set on living according to the lusts and desires of their own heart and they will not listen nor will they take heed to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Presumption is literally a lack of respect or authority for God's law. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand my brothers and my sisters that God never has and he never will tolerate presumption. Right. Look with me at Numbers chapter 15 and beginning at verse number 30. God didn't accept that from the children of Israel. And he's not going to accept that kind of activity from his children today. In Numbers chapter 15 and beginning at verse number 30, we see that the Bible says here, but the soul that doeth aught or anything presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, it doesn't matter if he came from the loins of Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. He's doing something that he knows is wrong. Presumptuously means he's aware of the fact that this offends God. And he still goes ahead and does it anyhow. God said if a man, if an individual, if that soul do it presumptuously, it doesn't matter whether he was born in the land or whether he joined us on the journey. The same reproach, the Lord says, and that soul shall be cut off from his people. Amen. God doesn't play when it comes to being shaking the fist of rebellion in his face. Amen. The God who led you out of the bondage of Egypt. The God who fed you when you were hungry in the wilderness with quail. The God who quenched your thirst with water from a dry rock. And if the water was too bitter in the lake, he could throw a tree in and make it sweet for you. He led you by a pillar of cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. And when Pharaoh came behind you, he drowned every last one of them. And you got the nerve to stand here and tell God you ain't going to do what he tell you to do. God said, you shall be cut off from among your people. Why, Lord? Verse 31. Because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his commandment. That soul shall be utterly cut off and his iniquity shall be on him. No sense of me trying to play the blame game. God said, his iniquity going to be on him. So what do we need to do tonight? To keep ourselves from being in a presumptuous position. What measures can we take as God's children yeah, so yeah. that we don't fall up under the same condemnation that they did? Number one, you better listen to the word. <laughs> I don't know what you were looking for, but that's all I got tonight. <laughs> Just listen to the word. Look with me in Matthew chapter 13 and beginning at verse number 18. And notice what Jesus says here. It is vitally important that if I'm going to keep my record clear, I got to listen to the word. The Bible says here, ye therefore the parable of the sower. Listen to what Jesus has to say about the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one. You know who he is, don't you? Mm -hmm. The wicked one is the devil. And the Bible says when you're listening to God's word and when God's word is just not taking root, it ain't because you can't understand. It's because you have a, a, a force working with you against you. So that you won't understand. The best thing you can do when God's word is being presented is pray, Lord, open up my heart. So I can receive.
receive your word. Yes. If something is wrong with my heart, then pray like David did. Lord, don't make me but create in me a clear heart mm -hmm. so that I can receive your word in a manner. Mm -hmm. It's going to help me live and understand what it is you want me to do. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, when he understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he that receives seed by the wayside. Listen to the word of God. It is vitally important that if we're going to live with God, that we listen to God. Amen. Number two, you can't just listen alone. But number two, when you listen, then you have to live by the word. Listen to the word. And then live by the word. Because even if you listen and understand. Mm -hmm. And still don't do what you understand. You're just as bad as the individual who was listening. Mm -hmm. Look with me at James chapter 1. And beginning at verse number 21. You can't just be a listener only. You cannot just hear. But God wants you to do something with what you hear. In James chapter 1 and beginning. Verse 21, James says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers or listeners only. It's not just enough for me to hear. I got to put into practice yes, what I hear. I got to take heed to what I hear. Right. I got to start exercising these principles and these laws so that I can be better in my service Amen. unto God. He says, don't be a hearer only. Right. You ain't deceiving nobody but yourself, Amen. verse 22. Mm -hmm. He says, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is just like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. That glass is a mirror. He's looking at himself in the mirror. And the pur purpose for looking at yourself in the mirror is not to admire how good you look. All right, then. <laughs> Amen. You look in the mirror to see if there are any corrections. Hello. That need to be made. Right. And so James says, now, now, James understood the purpose of the mirror. He says, because there is a man that will look at himself in the mirror. He will see that something is wrong. He knows his tie is crooked. He knows his hair is out of place. He knows he got one lens cocked down to the side. And he walks away from that mirror and doesn't make any corrections to the image which was looking back at him. Yes, sir. Some of us are just like the man in the mirror. We're looking at ourselves in God's word. We can see all of our imperfections just as clear as day. And then we'll sit here and close that book, tuck it up under our arm, rock back and forth like we got it all together, and walk out of here unchanged. James, are you just like that man? Who leaves that mirror and forgets what manner of man he was. Don't you see? Flaws and all. Look at him. You know what's wrong with him. You know what it's going to take to straighten him out. So why you just let him look you back in the face the way he is? Why don't you correct what you see me correcting? Because James said that the individual who looketh into a, the perfect law of liberty, he makes the necessary correction. He may straightens his hair up. He combs it forward and puts it in there. He knows how to get himself together. And then not only, he doesn't just do that on a one-time occasion. James says he continues therein. And because he continues to correct himself, James said that man is blessed in his deeds. Want to be blessed tonight? Straighten up what's messed up. Hello. Want to be blessed tonight? Quit living presumptuously. Yeah. Start living godly. Yeah. Let God have his way in your life. Yeah. Listen. Listen to the word. Live by the word. 